originally when I was in high school, I had committed to play soccer and attend the United States Military Academy at West Point. And I attended there after graduating high school. However, once I, you know, I decided I wanted to take a different, different path from the, from the army. You know, I, I wanted to go in to try to become a professional soccer player. I transferred back home to Florida International University at, here in Miami. Mm -hmm. And living at home, I wanted to, you know, have some type of way to make money for myself and stuff like that. So I, I looked into, you know, doing personal training for for soccer and I had one of my good friends that you know we we ended up starting it together and working together and mainly you know it was just seen as a as something you know to do on the side you know while I was playing soccer at FIU at the division one level and that's how that's how that's how it started. Perfect perfect so tell us a bit about your business then what, what does your company specialize in? So as I said before I had started with my best friend Mm -hmm. uh, at the time and we we grew a company together called uh prodigy soccer training and i worked there for about three years and then towards the end we had a tech kind of a falling out so i decided to go on my own and and do my own thing and that's where i, I created a premier soccer academy mm -hmm. and my my business specializes in a one on one or group training for soccer, mm -hmm. um, very technical based training, you know, with game like experiences and a lot of position based, uh, you know, training in order to improve the, the player on and off the field, you know, not only make them a better player, but also make them a better person mm -hmm. and try to try to improve all aspects of who they are as a player and, and as a person. Love that, love that. So you that have been coaching and training for, for a while now, what does a high quality session look like for you then? What should it include? Well, for me, I think, you know, to high quality session always starts with a good, a good warm up. Um, you know, some, some type of, you know, just active stretching, active warm up. So good then go into some type of agility, you know, speed and agility, mm -hmm. uh, some type of drill like that. And then a lot, about 20 to 30 minutes of technical work, you know, yeah. focused on first touch, passing, dribbling, small spaces, big spaces, ball mastery. And then towards the end, have, you know, bring some of the stuff that you did into in that technical training into something that's position based. You know, if a player is a right back, how can you work on their first touch going forward, you know, to play down the line? Or if they're center mid, can you work on having them turn and play into a space? You know, for me, that's that's my a high level training point. Absolutely love that. So with your current clients, who what, what type of clients do you work with? Are they normally beginners? Are they intermediate or are they players that are striving to play at a higher level? Um, I think for the most part, I have players that are striving to play at a higher level. Mm -hmm. um, I think I have mainly intermediate to those to those players straining, striving to be at a higher level. Even at a very young age, I have kids that are eight, nine years old, but that already, you know, have that mindset of wanting to go pro, wanting to go try out in different places. But I also have older players that are 14, 15 that, you know, want to just be better on their team to then possibly go play at a college level or something like that. But for the most part, I, I mean, I, I don't only choose them, mm -hmm. but I've been thankful and, you know, have, having the, the clientele to be always at a good high level with the sessions. So love that. So what, what's the number one thing you look for when you bring on a new client into your business? I think the you know the the hunger to to improve you know the commitment and the discipline you know mm -hmm. I think those are the the three the three main things I, I look for in a client because I rather much I much rather have you know a player that's you know beginner to intermediate that's willing to put in the work and willing to get better and willing to you know commit to the process rather than a high level player that you know thinks he knows it all and just there because his parents want him to be or something like that. 
Mm-hmm. Love that, love that. So let me take you back to when you first started uh, Premier Soccer Academy. What what is what was your biggest obstacle when you started, and do you currently have obstacles today? So my biggest obstacle was definitely managing my time between you know being a Division One athlete and running the business. Mm-hmm. I think that have trying to find the time, you know, and the energy to do it after, you know, being, being in training, lifting weights, going to class, and then having to go and, you know, put in a, a qu- high quality session mm-hmm. was one of my main, my main obstacles. And then I started in right after COVID hit. Mm-hmm. So that was another obstacle for me, you know, having to deal with COVID and having to deal with, uh, you know, all the regulations at the time. Mm-hmm. easing into you know normalcy and then having to you know maintain all like the cdc guidelines and stuff like that while trying to be a coach having a one-on-one session was was quite difficult so how, how do you manage playing and managing managing a business so at the at the beginning it was very it was very difficult because it's not just being a coach you know that's the, it's a big part but it's not the only part uh, I've realized over the last few months that, you know, being, being very active on social media is very important, you know, being active with the parents, communicating with them, you know, going to see the, the, the player play, you know, dedicating that undivided attention to them is very important, which I didn't have before. Mm-hmm. And now that I do, I've seen a very big difference, you know, very big difference in my amount of clientele and then, you know, the commitment of the clientele. Awesome. So how many clients are you currently working with at the moment? Uh, I think about 20 to 30 clients per week. That's awesome. Excellent. Congrats. I hope I hope that, that continues to grow as well. Yes, I, I hope so as well. Awesome. So where so Andre, where do you see private training going in the US in the next two to five years then? I think it's only gonna get big, get bigger, get you know more more people trying to get into this business as you know it's it's a very um it's a high risk high reward you know if you're willing to put in the effort into yourself and you you know you're willing to believe in yourself and put in the work and i think it's it's very rewarding Mm -hmm. you know i think people are starting to see that more and more and are starting to get that so i think it's only going to increase especially in those high populated areas you know, high, high soccer areas in the US. Mm -hmm. Love that. So for any coach watching this interview or or listening, listening to it, what would you say to them if they, they want to start a business, but they're either hesitant or they have a fear of starting, what would be your number one advice for them? I think, I mean, the number one advice to me for myself, you know, when when I was doing this, you know, I had uh, I had just moved into a new place. I, you know, I just had a, a one-year-old son. So I had a lot on, you know, a lot of things, a lot of people depending on me. Yeah. And for me, this is something I love. And if it's something that the other coaches love and they have devoted their, you know, almost their entire lives to the sport that they, that they, they've, they've been doing, I think, you know, what do you have to lose? Mm-hmm. in betting on yourself mm-hmm. you know it, it's something that you've you've loved for since you were a kid you know possibly and in my situation you know I've been playing soccer since I was four and I never imagined myself doing anything else so if you just have to believe in yourself and you know don't look back and don't look to only look to people that are going to encourage you not diminish you I love that. So what, what skills that you've developed in coaching have you taken into business then? I think uh, definitely being a, a leader. You know, I, I brought in a few other coaches to work with me, you know, being, I mean, learning how to, to lead these kids and how to manage them is, is helping me ha- manage the coaches I work with. Yeah. And also uh, just the discipline of keeping up with, you know, planning sessions reflecting on my sessions mm-hmm. and trying to become a better coach every day is the same thing i i i do with business you know, I, I graduated in international business at florida international university and 
that's helped me out as well. You know, having that background and going into the, my own business. Love that. So how many coaches do you have working, working for you then at the moment? I have two, I have two other coaches. Uh, one is with works with me in this location in Miami. And then I have another coach in Fort Lauderdale. Oh, awesome. And how have you found managing other, other coaches then? I think it's, it's been easy for me at least because they're my friends. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them was my teammate at FIU. And then one of them was an old teammate of mine when I played uh, in club soccer when I was younger. Mm -hmm. So it's not, they're not strangers to me. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, you have to keep a, a business, you know, relationship with them. You know, you have to put the friendship aside for certain things, but for other things, it's easier to talk to them. It's easier for them to understand where they're coming from because they know you. They know mm. me, at least on a personal level. Mm. Love that. Love that. So let me take you back to the beginning when you first started. How did you how did you get your first client? So my first client, my for very first client when I got back from from West Point uh, was a friend of mine. His little brother was playing soccer mm. and he just told me, like, look, you want to, you know, I know you're trying to start training. You want to train my brother? And I was like, yeah, sure. He just, yeah, he offered me 20 bucks to train him. And I was like, yeah, I'll train him. And then he started liking it a lot and he started to improve. And then I started to realize that I liked it as well. Mm -hmm. And then from then on, it was just, you know, just trying to look for more clients and trying to build my name. Love that. And what would you say is the number one thing kids today need? I think depending on the age level and, you know, the their knowledge of the game and stuff like that for most of all they need you know open-minded number open-minded coach a motivational coach yeah. and then someone that understands what it's like to be in their shoes i think that's very you know be have that empathy for them you know they what it's like to be a, a kid you know that's in third fourth fifth sixth grade mm -hmm. or above mm -hmm. and being going to school having friends you know realizing and also realizing that soccer isn't everything. I think yeah. trying to teach them that is very big. Yeah. I try and teach myself that every day, but I struggle. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I do. I do too. There's, <laughs> yeah. there's a part of me that, that understands it. And there's another part of me that, that, that doesn't understand it at all. Yeah, exactly. 100%. Perfect. So let, let, me, let me ask you a bit about your, your sales and marketing process then. So how do you sell, sell and, and market your business then? It's come to a point where a lot of my references lately have been, you know, word of mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, the kids I've been training from before talk to the to other people and recommend me, um, which has been which has been very good. That's you know, that's that's kind of what you want to look for as a as a personal trainer. Yeah. But also I'm, I've been very active on social media. Um, and then I I don't I don't try to, you know, negotiate my prices. You know, I try to keep always a steady price. And I, I think my prices have been very, you know, um, fair and manageable, you know, going with the society that we live in, especially here in Miami, that everything's only getting more expensive. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm trying to, you know, market myself, posting my sessions on social media and then, you know, just in person, you know, trying to, with all the different avenues I work with soccer, just trying to promote my, my personal training business as well. Love that. Love that. So something we teach our coaches in, in our program is how to add value away from the training session. So what's a couple of things that you do in your business to add value to, to, to your clients away from training? So apart, apart from training, um, I, I do also, for example, game, game film analysis. Mm -hmm. um i you know I'll, I'll have a kid send me you know his game film and try to and analyze it for him see what he could do better see what he did well um i'll go to games to watch um and then also just having you know that one-on-one -on -one time i think you know parents have really seemed to value it you know like i'll have the kid arrive 15 minutes early and you know just not do anything related to soccer just have a nice conversation ask mm -hmm. them how school went you know, what do they like to do outside of soccer? Just have them not just feel like, you know, their only value is as a player. 
mm -hmm. but teach them that their value is as a person as well. Love that, love that. So now that you mentioned communication, how, how important is it to have good communication with parents? Oh, it's vital. I think it's the most important thing with your, with, with, if you want to keep those clients, you know, if you want to really keep those clients and see the clients stay for a, a long time, I think the number one thing is to have a good relationship with the, mm -hmm. with the parents, especially for players that are, you know, high school, like, you know, about eighth grade and below where the parents are still, like, you know, they, they have a very big relationship. Like I have certain kids that, you know, I will pick them up and take them to practice because they're already, you know, in high school, they're homeschooled, mm -hmm. you know, and they, they, they're already more independent. So mm -hmm. the relationship is more important with them. Mm -hmm. But I have eight or nine year olds that, you know, I have a very good relationship with their parents and, you know, the kids, the parents are always going to want, you know, talk to the other parents about me. And that's where, that's where it gets even better. Perfect. Love that. Love that. So where, where do you see your, your business in the next five years from now then? Five years from now, um, God willing, I'll have my own facility, uh, my own indoor facility because Miami is too hot. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah it's i hope to have my own indoor facility where i can have you know training sessions day and night and then to also have um you know own my own leagues you know like uh 6v6 5v5 leagues being played at my facility as well to where you know i'm organizing all that and then having uh you know players from all over just come and train and have have a place to where they can call a home yeah love that and with with a lot of air conditioning right yes 100%, 100%. especially in miami yes <laughs> that's awesome love that so two two last questions for you these are more of a personal yes. ones and these are ones that i like to ask so okay. the first one is what does failure mean to you and the second one how important is risk in business so failure to me means that you're not learning from your mistakes because I don't, I don't see failure as, you know, you're making a mistake. I think it's a failure when you don't learn from your mistake. Mm -hmm. I feel that, it, you know, it's normal. It's not, no one's perfect and, you know, you're not, you're, everyone's going to make mistakes, but being a failure, you know, that, that connotation to it, I feel like is something that, you're not learning from your mistakes and you continuing to make mistakes and utterly you think of yourself as a failure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For the second, I think it's, it's, you know, it, it all depends on how much you want to grow. If you want to grow, then there's going to be a lot of risk because, you know, scared money doesn't make money, you know, and if, mm -hmm. if you, if you're not really, if you're not willing to put in the risk, if you're not willing to put bet on yourself and go all the way, Mm -hmm. then you're, you're going to plateau and you're going to stay at a certain level. If you want to get to the highest level, then you're going to have to put in the, the work and the risk. Love that. Love those two answers. Perfect. All right, Andre, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, you've got a really fantastic story. Now, if any coach watching this or listening wants to follow your business or wants to get in contact with you, what would be the best way to do so? You can follow my Instagram page at Premier Soccer Academy. Mm -hmm. And also uh, my email is uh, deco917 at gmail.com. You know, if you have any questions that they have or want to get in contact with me, those are the best too. Awesome. Fantastic. All right, Andre, I wish you the very best in the future with your business. I hope you, your program grows and I hope you get your indoor facility with lots of air conditioning. <laughs> thank you very much i really appreciate it all right take care and we'll connect we'll connect soon thank you have a great day